Okay, just to confirm, everyone hears me very well and uh, see my, uh, my presentation in presentation mode. Yes, Hello? we can. We can see you, we can hear you, and we can see your presentation. That is great. Thank you so much. Um, so uh, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Emmanuel. Thank you very much to all moderators and, and participants. Uh, it was great uh, connecting with you. Uh, Uganda is the pearl of, uh, of Africa, so true. Um, uh, and Uganda is very special to my heart. So today I'm, I'm, I'm really excited to connect with you uh, through a Zoom call. Uh, actually, my, uh, my last uh, business trip right before the COVID-19 uh, uh, you know, hit was to Kampala. And I had also the pleasure to, uh, to be the guest of uh, Jean-Philippe in Sheraton. Uh, such an amazing place. Uh, Uganda is also special to my heart because my only son uh, was born when I was uh, in a business trip to Kampala. Uh, so uh, very good memories and uh, very good, um, uh, you know, uh, memories about, about Uganda and, and all the, the people there. Uh, thank you so much. I, I really would like to start my session by uh, uh, an article that has been published by the World Economic uh, Forum. And the question that was addressed was about how Africa can feed the world. You know, uh, with all the big potential that we have uh, in terms of agriculture, in terms of natural resources um, that we have in Africa, uh, we, here we are not really questioning the capability because we all believe that Africa can feed the world. And uh, the, the, the question is, uh, what challenges out there and what opportunities out there for, for Africans uh, so that they can get the most out of, uh, of the opportunities out there and face the different challenges, of course, to be able to bring value to the African people and also to uh, be able to feed uh, the world. So my session today is more linked to, to the COVID-19. Uh, I, I will more talk about the uh, digital technology, so mainly I will cover some of the business cases here. But it's really important to see how COVID-19 is really shaping. Of course, we are talking about the old normal and now the, the new normal. And the big question is what, is, what would be the next normal? And there is a lot of research that is going on, whether from academia or practice, that, will, that is covering that uh, specific question. Uh, the agenda I'm going to cover, um, first we will see some of the COVID-19 and impact on, uh, on the agribusiness, and then we will see um, uh, a first business case that Oracle is working with a global organization uh, to enable the, um, to solve some of the agribusiness uh, uh, challenges. And then we will see a second, uh, a second business case, uh, uh, that is the AgroScote, which is um, um, a startup um, that is producing some of the solutions to solve some of the world hunger based on artificial intelligence. So this is mainly the uh, agenda for today. So uh, to start with, uh, uh, of course, we, we, all, we have all been you know, impacted somehow by uh, the COVID-19. And of course, agriculture and the agribusiness is, is not an exception. Uh, if we look at the triple effect of the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, the desert lo uh, locust invasion and the floods that that are that happened in in many countries in the region uh, and nutrition security and real likelihood livelihoods uh, in eastern africa uh, this with the you know with some of the preliminary analysis of the impact of the pandemic in the sub region reveal uh, disruptions to access to agricultural inputs and this includes of course uh, labor uh, it includes uh, uh, extension and uh, advisory services or consulting services related to um, agriculture and agribusiness in general, and also is impacting deeply the output markets uh, for many farmers, uh, fisher folk, and, and uh, uh, pastoralists. Um, especially, there is also labor uh, availability challenge, mainly in the uh, land, uh, I mean, the, the, the locked land, um, uh, uh, countries like, like Uganda, like South Sudan, and also touching uh, other countries like Burundi and Djibouti and, and Eritrea. Uh, of course, with the, um, uh, the stay-at-home policy, uh, so access to labor was, was quite a big challenge. 
uh, uh, the um, extension, and this, of course, indirectly affected also the access to the advisory uh, services and uh, um, also the access to the grazing and watering points. If, if we look at the um, mainly Uganda and, and also the uh, surrounding countries, uh, there is lots of uh, watering points and, and, uh, and uh, you know, grazing areas that are, you know, we see uh, uh, lots of uh, uh, farmers are, are using. So, of course, like being restricted uh, to move uh, freely um, throughout these points, it, it affected deeply. Uh, the, uh, the the farm, uh, I mean, uh, the agribusiness at the farm level. The second was the impact on the value chain. And of course, this, um, I mean, mainly was impacted by the interruptions in the logistics. So if we see, uh, of course, the uh, the spread of the COVID is, is fostered by the movement of, of people and mainly uh, in the region is the movement of trucks uh, and, and drivers of those trucks. Uh, so, um, in order to be in control of the situation of the COVID, of course, there has been lots of restrictions, uh, trucks and, and drivers who was uh, forbidden to, uh, to move. And this created, of course, interruptions uh, um, uh, related to the, to the value chain uh, and the shortage of food truck and drivers to, to deliver uh, the, the produces, the products, and, and also, you know, all, all the required inputs disease, fertilizers, uh, veterinary services, and all of those. There was also interruptions in processing. That is, you know, like meat and dairy. And of course, um, uh, this impacted mainly um, uh, the, uh, I mean, the, the, the poor side of the population because, uh, I mean, uh, um, uh, these products were still available in, in supermarkets, uh, um, maybe at a higher price. But of course, if, if, we, if we look at the majority, uh, these uh, produces was not uh, available for everyone. And of course, this, uh, you know, make it a little bit worse when it comes to uh, uh, covering all population of these, of these products, uh, which are quite important. And then, of course, the closure of many informal markets. And we all see and we all know that the informal markets are uh, key, um, you know, uh, elements in the value chain when it comes to agriculture in, in, in Uganda and also in the region. So having all of these informal markets closing, uh, of course, it ad uh, affected deeply uh, the, value, the value chain. The labor shortages here, because as I, uh, again, I said, stay at home policy uh, impacted uh, deeply um, availability of, uh, of labor. And then the impact on at the household level. Uh, the first, of course, is the job losses. And we have seen with uh, Jean-Philippe, so the, this affected, for example, hotel personnel and all businesses. It's not just that. And also the, um, the agribusiness was deeply impacted. Many uh, people have lost their, their job. Um, and of course, this, uh, you know, widened the poverty gap uh, in, in society. With the limited access also to fresh nutrition, uh, nutritious food, um, of course, it, it, with, with all the impact that this could have on uh, the public health uh, safety uh, of, of citizens. And of course, the suspension of, of school feeding programs, uh, we, which normally used to feed uh, millions of Eastern African children. So all of these children was, was affected with that. Uh, uh, we have seen a reduction from three meals to uh, one meal uh, for uh, lots of schools in, in, in Uganda and in the region. And of course, with all the impact that this could have on, on children in the region. Those, those are somehow some of the impact that COVID-19 uh, brought to, to this business. Now I'm, I'm going to cover uh, some of the business cases to showcase how technology and why technology is, is important here and how technology can really impact, you know, with, with the variety of technologies that we can talk about. Uh, 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 I mean, what, what we have seen is that uh, technology can really make things more efficient uh, and can really bring value uh, to what we, what we can call a data-driven policymaking related to agriculture and the agribusiness. Uh, so the first case is um, a case that has been, uh, you know, in a partnership uh, between Oracle and one of the global organizations, which is the, pro the, the World Bee uh, Project. Um, the aim of that was to listen to bees. 
to save them and to save us. Uh, we will see in more details the case. So just to give some background, uh, in, in the past 50 years, so there has been 300% increase in the volume of agricultural production that depends on pollination. And of course, this also is correlated with the increase of the world population. And amazingly, 54% decrease in number of honeybees between 1985 and 205. This happened mainly in UK. And from another side, 59% decrease in bees colonies between 1947 and 2008. That is a fell from uh, around 6 million to uh, around 2 million and a half uh, bees, bees colonies globally. Uh, so if we look at, at this paradox, so from one side, we are witnessing and we need, we still need a big increase in the volume of agriculture that depends on pollination. And here we are talking about natural pollination by, by bees. And from the other side, we see um, a decrease when it comes to uh, bees and bees colonies. And this is a big contradiction. And uh, it, it really puts the, uh, I mean, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the, the whole uh, food security, the global food security at, uh, at jeopardize. Um, now, why are bees are so important for agriculture? Uh, first of all, if we look at just the, uh, the, the amount of jobs that are created based on, uh, on bees uh, business. Uh, uh, so currently we are at 1.4 uh, uh, billion farming jobs. Okay. And of course, uh, the impact on, uh, on bees will impact the, um, um, uh, I mean, uh, this huge amount of, of, of jobs that are created. And if we look at the world food supply, so 75% of the world food supply that is worth uh, $577 billion a year that is related to uh, bees and, uh, you know, uh, honey, honey uh, production uh, business. And in, in all of those, you know, 90% of the crops that feeds, uh, I mean, 70% of the crops that feed 90% of the world population uh, are, you know, pollinated by bees. And that is like natural pollination. So from these numbers, we can see and we can witness why bees are so important for the agriculture and why bees are so important for us, for the globe. So uh, the BBC has, uh, uh, you know, uh, published uh, a paper uh, talking about this partnership between Oracle and and uh, uh, the the World Project Bees, uh, where the scientists, uh, based on artificial intelligence and machine learning, they are targeting to save the world bees. But why bees are in trouble? Why we have issues with them? Of course, there is the, an overuse of um, the insecticides. We all know uh, how the pollution, the, uh, especially the air pollution, is harming uh, all the natural resources, including bees and, and, and colonies. Uh, the global warming, we all know how the global warming is affecting all the natural resources, including bees. And uh, what is called the varroa destructor mite, which is, you know, I, I put it in this picture, if you see in the screen, which is this small uh, insect that attacks the bees and it kills them. Um, and of course, there is, uh, last but not least, is the interference from the electromagnetic radiation, uh, mainly the 5G. So we all know that the 5G is coming soon. Um, and with all the radiation um, related to the to the, to the telecom, uh, you know, uh, uh, communication, it's also affecting deeply uh, the bees. Uh, there is also a, a very important fact that is, you know, uh, when the bees swarm, the existing hive can lose half of its population, and of course, the the half it goes to to build another, uh, you know, another uh, colony. But half of, of, uh, of, of course, it loses half of its honey. And, you know, half of those bees, they, uh, I mean, 
when they are about to leave, they gorge themselves and, and they die. And of course, we can see the impact that also this can have on, on bees. Now, the, uh, the solution that, uh, that uh, Oracle with, uh, with uh, the, 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 the World Project Bees, uh, uh, you know, came up with is what we call the smart hives. Those are hives, uh, beehives, that are equipped with sensors, so mainly six sensors that are mounted on hives and capturing the sound of the bees that are buzzing. And with the movement of their feet and wings, of course, also the weight of the, of the honey that is produced, uh, the hive's humidity, and also all the, uh, you know, the environmental factor like temperature and, and all of these, uh, you know, uh, uh, effects that are, you know, surrounding the, the hive. And uh, the solution is really to process all of this data in real time and bring good insights to all those scientists and to see how the bees are behaving in regards to these conditions. And of course, if we have a deep understanding of all of these conditions and how it affects the bees' lives and the bees' production and honey production, of course, it will bring us insight on how we can save them. The next slide, we will see a video, so I'll just pause for, for, uh, for a second. The World Bee Project uses Oracle Cloud to help bees survive and thrive. We face a global crisis. Pollinator populations are declining, threatening global food supply and biodiversity. We need to know how habitat loss, single crop farming and pesticides affect them. So we study bee behavior through acoustic technology. We generate masses of important data using AI, data visualizations and analytics. We spot patterns, trends and correlations. The World Bee Project uses Oracle Cloud to help bees survive and thrive. We face a global crisis. Pollinator populations are declining, threatening global food supply and biodiversity. We need to know how habitat loss, single crop farming and pesticides affect them. So we study bee behavior through acoustic technology. We generate masses of important data using AI, data visualizations and analytics. We spot patterns, trends and correlations. So we share insights and collaborate with scientists, governments, NGOs and farmers from Kent to Canberra to Kyoto. Bees are vital to our future. With Oracle Cloud, we have a chance to protect pollinators, people, and the planet. And the, the second case I am going to talk about is uh, Agroscout, which is um, you know, um, a startup that is developing an artificial intelligence-based uh, autonomous system that protects crops um, everywhere. Uh, so we'll see how AgroScope it uses machine learning algorithms uh, that are, of course, based on, on Oracle Cloud to analyze drone uh, that are capturing images of farm fields by knowing which pests and diseases to treat. Uh, growers can save money and improve yield uh, and, and feed uh, more people globally. So we'll, we'll see this, this, um, so, uh, this case. The, ch the challenge that are mainly, uh, you know, uh, faced by uh, farmers is the loss of their crops. Uh, the FAO uh, has uh, published that uh, farmers are losing about 40% of their crops uh, to pests and diseases. And we can imagine the impact this could have on the global population. And of course, no one can, um, especially in, 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 you know, with all the disruption that we have mentioned, the COVID-19 and all of these difficult, uh, you know, uh, environmental factors in, in the region, uh, we just cannot afford uh, such, such a loss. You know, 40% is huge amount, is, is, is about half of the uh, production of crops uh, are, are, are lost. Um, yeah. Um, so what the Agroscout has done, so they have equipped um, uh, drones. So we, uh, we, ha uh, we have drones that are flying over the farm uh, field. They capture images of crops uh, 
And everything is processed based on machine learning algorithms to analyze and collect image data in real time. And th this will allow farmers to know exactly when and where to, they need to spray. So you can imagine the impact, of course, on cost, uh, the, uh, the, the precision it will allow, uh, you know, to, uh, to be uh, at the highest level of, uh, of, of efficiency. And here we are really uh, working with drones. So in terms of speed uh, of treatment, it's, um, uh, it's almost on real time. So you can imagine all those drones, uh, you know, based on all of these real time processing of data, they are capable of analyzing all of these, processing all of these images and all of these data, and based on uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning doing all the required treatment. So the same here, we are going to watch um, another video. AgroScout is about early detection of disease and pests in field crops, which is a major problem for growers around the world. The three major crops that we grow in the world are wheat, corn, and rice and they're all at the limit. Now we need to grow more and more. The only way that we can do that is reducing the loss. We use small robot drones to fly around the field autonomously, and all those images just go up into the Oracle Cloud. We do the magic, because using an artificial intelligence. It's actually looking at those images like a person would, bringing that technology to every farmer so they can put out those chemicals on time. We looked at all the major providers, including the big one that we were using before, but Oracle has helped us with major technical issues with cloud-native containers and DevOps to go from a static application to a dynamic microservice-based app that allows us to onboard customers globally daily. Before, it took us more than 24 hours to deploy every new version, and now it just takes minutes. The performance on the Oracle cloud infrastructure has been several times in magnitude than what we had before. The users before had a challenge to even work with our software. Now we can just query thousands of thousands of images in a few seconds. Oracle Cloud is a simple, low-cost process and it allows us to bring growers the best practice in agronomy, helping them defeat disease and pest, helping them grow more and provide food security for the world today and tomorrow. So this is uh, really a very good story about Agroscout. So Agroscout is is a uh, is a new startup. It's, it started in uh, in 2017, um, and within a couple of years, uh, the the company was able to deliver uh, the highest level of innovation uh, in regards to agribusiness. So here, uh, uh, just I uh, I summarize some of the key takeaways today. Um, we all know that the agribusiness of course, is struggling to face the COVID-19 and also the environmental changes. Um, technology and data are key to solving many of these challenges, many of these challenges. Um, of course, as Oracle, we will come uh, to discuss in, in more details. And my, in, in my daily job is we connect with, uh, with our partners uh, to, uh, you know, to identify what could be the best business cases uh, of innovation, of course, in regards to uh, the agribusiness or uh, any other sectors. Uh, cloud technology is really something to consider, and we highly recommend uh, that we take it, I mean, as, as an equalizer as, and as an enabler. Uh, the cloud now making technology affordable for everyone um, and at a high competitive cost, at a very cost advantage. Of course, as Oracle, we support startups, we support organizations, we support our partners uh, in sharing also the knowledge, uh, enabling uh, people, enabling population, enabling citizens uh, to bring uh, you know, more value, uh, especially when it comes to agriculture and agribusiness, because we all know that this is something that is very important and critical uh, for all human beings. Uh, thank you very much for having me, and uh, over to you, Manuel. Thank you, thank you, Monir. Thank you.